live. We are live. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're on it. I'm just trying to follow the directions here on the screen. Car Con Carne live. It's quarantine con carne. I'm in quarantine across the vast expanse of the World Wide Web. I have Calum O'Donnell. He is the Chicago brand ambassador for Aberlauer Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. It's International Whiskey Day, a, a blessed holiday for all of us. And you're ready. You've got all sorts of... Got it whiskey. all here. I have okay. it all here ready, ready and prepped. All right, so we'll talk scotch. We'll talk all about what you do. But first, Car Con Carne, uh, which is effectively quarantine con carne for the foreseeable future, is sponsored by C&H Financial Services. C&H Financial Services, when business gets back to normal, when the world gets back to normal, when things start to feel like they did all the way back in February, go to freeprocessingnow.com or call 855-600-2437, extension 999, and start saving money today. I want to point out my apparel tonight. I'm wearing... Uh, a hoodie of the Atlas Moth, Chicago band. Want to represent Chicago here. Uh, not nearly as impeccably dressed as Callum O'Donnell tonight, who's <laughs> wearing a blazer to a, a web chat at you know, 8 o'clock on a Friday night. We can, learn, um, you know, we can uh, learn a thing or two from you. You got, you got to take pride in your appearance, especially. Although what I, I was considering just wearing a pair of boxers on the bottom, but I put my <laughs> jeans on just for you. I appreciate that. Very tasteful, very tasteful. Uh, Callum, you couldn't work for... Aberlauer without the name Callum O'Donnell, could you? I mean, it seems like it's like your birthright to work for this company. Well, um, I mean, my, the, the name O'Donnell is actually Irish. Um, and obviously, I'm working for a Scotch company. I'm originally from Scotland, but my father's family is, is from Ireland way, way back when. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's definitely there's that Celtic connection there. Um, but often people, when they first meet me, they think that I'm Irish and then I open my mouth and then a lot of Americans aren't really sure. They don't quite have the, <laughs> they aren't quite tuned into the differences, the nuances, if you like, of the Irish and the Scottish accent. So yeah, I mean, a lot of people do mention the name O'Donnell. They're like, oh my God, so you gotta be Irish. And I'm like, well, wait, was that, your, was that your American accent? That's my American. I have several American accents. I'm sure we'll get through them all though. Do it again. Say, oh my God, I can't even. Uh, oh my God, I can't even. Nailed it. You totally Absolutely nailed, nailed it. it man. Nailed it's, it, man. It seems to me like your gig as the brand ambassador for Aberlauer, that, that's a dream job. It's like fantasy land. Yeah, it's a pretty good job. I mean, um, I think I don't, I don't think being like a podcast host or a, or a radio host is much, much worse. Um, I think the, 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 the best thing about this job, obviously, is that the people that you meet, you know, and, and especially nowadays, whiskey has such an amazing following around the world. And it's amazing to see you know, people from all different walks of life that are getting involved in whiskey, whether it's scotch like Aberlauer or whether it's, um, you know, like a bourbon or an Irish whiskey, you know, so it's definitely, that's probably the best part of the job, but there's also the perks that, you know, I'm, I'm never, I'm never wanting for a bottle of good scotch, you know, um, which is always nice, which is always nice. So Friday, Friday night, nightcap, it's always available if I need it. You mentioned being all over the world. You've, you've traveled everywhere. Is there a place on the planet that we'd be surprised by their whiskey consumption? Um, so, I mean, I, I, I'm going to sound a bit like a broken record to anyone that knows me, but um, last year or two years ago now, I lived in the Dominican Republic and they drink whiskey like it's going out of fashion. Um, I couldn't believe the amount of whiskey that they, that they, that, or scotch even that those guys drink down there. Um, I mean, obviously, you guys in the United States, you know, by value, this is the this is the biggest va this is the biggest market in the world by value. Um, but there's also, I lived in France for a time, and the French they're the biggest consumer in the world of single malt scotch. So if if you were thinking it might be somewhere like China or or even the United States or somewhere in Latin America like Brazil, it's not. It's the French. Um, and of all the people in the world, I'd say that they have good palates for for flavor. So they've picked a good one in, in single malt. And funnily enough, um, Aberlauer is actually the number one selling single malt in France. So we get the double whammy there. And Aberlauer has been around since the 19th century. Yeah. So we like to call Aberlauer, rather than a startup, we like to call it a slow up. It's been around since 1879. So... Uh, 141 years ago. And for, for the amateur, for someone who is jumping on this podcast, watching this video chat, who doesn't, who's just kind of unfamiliar, explain the difference between scotch and whiskey, all the nuances. So, I mean, so the difference between scotch and whiskey, so whiskey is the family name, if you like. Um, and a lot of people in the United States get, get whiskey mixed up because they call American whiskey, whiskey. But Whiskey's the family name, so, and Scotch is just the name of for whiskey that's 
produced and matured in Scotland. So, for example, Aberlour is 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 uh, totally produced and locally sourced in the Highlands of Scotland, and then we mature it in Scotland in barrels. It rests in barrels for years and years and years, um, and then we we bottle it. And that's what makes it Scotch, essentially. The fact that we're using a grain, yeast, and water, um, it's made in Scotland. Well, that's, the, that's the big thing. And that's why it gets called Scotch. Now, if you make, for example, a whiskey in Ireland, it gets called Irish whiskey. If you make um, a whiskey in the United States, it's American whiskey. Um, if you make it explicitly from corn and you use um, virgin oak wood to mature the whiskey, then it becomes bourbon, right? So um, those are, there's just slight nuances. And essentially when we talk about Scotch or we talk about Japanese whiskey, or we talk about Irish whiskey, it's just telling you, it's just denouncing where it's from. You know, it just basically says, oh, this is from, or denotes rather where it's from. This is from Ireland or Scotland or Japan and so on. Take us through what the Eberlauer product line offers. Take us through oh, the, wow. we, the 12, the 18, the 8. The so eight. I have the 12 here. Um, I'm not actually going to, we're not going to drink the 12 uh, neat. I'm actually going to save that for the cocktail. I like how you say right up. You mean you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this one, uh, the reason, so I have a bunch of uh, Aberlour in my house, but obviously it's a Friday night. I'm in my house by myself. I don't want to go doing like a four or five different whiskey tasting. So I picked my favorite. I picked my favorite Aberlour. Uh, this is the Aberlour 16 year old. I have it in my glass here. Um, you can see that lovely amber gold color. Mm -hmm. um, Aberlour, the Aberlour 16 is my favorite because it's got just a beautiful balance to it. It, it suits every occasion. Um, and it's just got that lovely rich floral and fruity flavor. But those are the first two in the line, the 12 year old and the 16 year old. And then we also have the 18 year old, which is the most expensive uh, in the range. That comes in at around $120, $130 here in, in Chicago, depending on where you shop. And then we also have two different bottles of whiskey, which are called the Abuna and the Abuna Alba. Um, I actually have a bottle of the Alba next door. Maybe if I get a quick break, I'll run through and grab it. Um, and then we've got the, the Cascanam, which is a US exclusive along with the Alba. Um, and then we've also got some, some small exclusives. For example, here in Chicago this year, we launched a, a Chicago exclusive. It was a 15-year-old scotch. Um, and that came in uh, with only 204 bottles. So we sold 204 bottles across Chicago. So I'm sure that uh, hopefully someone that's listening might... Uh, might actually know a little bit about that. I might have tried it themselves. So we did a we did like a kind of design competition in September, and um, the winner was from Chicago, and she got to design the the box that the whiskey came in, and we flew over two hundred and four bottles of the special whiskey just for that purpose. So it's pretty cool. That's super cool. All right, wait, hang on. I'm just doing some technology stuff. All right. No so we're all sequestered. We're all locked indoors. We are sheltering at home. Uh, where can we get Aberlour right now? You can get Aberlour, I mean, there's a bunch of different spots. Obviously, right now, we've got bars that are closed. Um, usually, though, you know, any good whiskey bar across the city will have it. Uh, some of my personal favorites are, are places like the Drum Bar. Um, I love the Travel at the, the Langham Hotel. I also love Beacon Tavern, the Gage. And then there's some kind of neighborhood bars as well, such as Sportsman's, uh, the Red Lion. These are all great bars that you can find this stuff. And then if you're looking at... Um, if you're looking uh, to buy it like in a, in a liquor store, then Wait, of which, course, which is the, the only option right now. I mean, well, that is all, the only all great places right now. Yeah. 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 So any, any liquor store really will do it. You know, for example, you could even go into a supermarket like Plum Market um, on the north side. Um, you could do Benny's, of course, which is probably one of the, probably the most prolific name that we'll hear um, of, of off trade places that you can do or, um, or liquor stores that you can buy it in. And then there's Benny, also. Benny's our, is growing so fast. I think there's one in my basement now. Every well, time there I might turn around, be, there's a new one. There yeah. might be. And you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know because they're so, they're so sneaky. They're fast, you know? Uh -huh. And then um, there's also another really nice place that I like, which is a little bit more about supporting local, which is called Warehouse Liquors. Um, and that's on, the, uh, that's, in, that's on the south side of the loop. So it's a beautiful store. And the, the owner there, Eugene, is a really, really nice guy. And um, he's massively into Aberla and he's got a great knowledge on it as well. Right on. All right. So you're going to demo. Uh, yeah. You're going you're to make us a whiskey sour tonight? What are you going to make? So, uh, well, to be honest, I wanted to talk a little bit about whiskey in itself and, and tasting it like this. Um, I've, I've basically just picked up a wine glass or I think this is like a kind of champagne kind of glass here. Mm -hmm. um, and this is so that I can drink my 16. Um, I've actually added a wee bit of water to this. Um, I like to add a little bit of water. It just kind of brings the alcohol content down and makes it easier to drink. That's not um, considered sacrilege? 
No, no. And a lot of people think that. A lot of people think that if you add water, if you add ice even to whiskey, then it's sacrilege. It's, it's not at all. And, and honestly, uh, it's more just about adding whatever you want to it to, to enjoy it the best way you can. And we'll see that in a second when, when we make the cocktail with the Aberlour 12. Um, it, I mean, a lot of people get kind of bogged down in these things, you know. And at the end of the day, it's, it's about enjoying whiskey however you like, you know, and sometimes people say, Oh, does that mean that I can add Coca-Cola or Red Bull? I don't recommend that. I don't <laughs> recommend that. Um, I would always recommend to try it on its own with a little drop of water. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, if you're buying the stuff, you deserve to drink it however you like. I personally, I'm a whiskey sour fanatic. Like I'm going to make us a whiskey sour in a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I do it and my favorite way of doing it. But, um, you know, people, people get really obsessed with this kind of stuff, man. Sure. You know, and, it's, and it's more just, like I say, it's more just about enjoying it um, and taking the time to really appreciate all the craftsmanship that's gone into it. For example, uh, when we talk about Aberlour 12 or we talk about Aberlour 16, that means that it's rested for that amount of years in the barrel. So the Aberlour 12 was created or was produced 12 years ago, back in 2008. And that, and that was when it was put into barrels to steep, um, to rest rather. Um, and the 16 likewise back in 2004 so this whiskey's come a long way from scotland to get to your glass um, and it's always nice to make sure that you're enjoying it with high quality ingredients or on its own you know so if we drink a whiskey that was made in 2008 that was the time of the recession it seems like an appropriate symbolic time remember that last time we all really just lost our shit cheers <laughs> well i um I, at, at the time, I was only 16 in 2008. I don't want to make anyone feel old, but I wasn't, I, <laughs> I wasn't drinking whiskey back then. Um, <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew a lot about it, but I wasn't drinking it, unfortunately. Um, and it was only until obviously I got to 18 in Scotland, and then it would have been 21 here. But thankfully, I was, it's only 18, the legal drinking age in Scotland. But yeah, I mean, so I suppose there's a little bit of symbolism there. I also I, think just as well that just, I mean, really, I, no, but I mean, but but I think there is a little bit. Um, I think that something that something that's been really really cool for me over the past few days is that we are doing things that we never would have thought we would have done on, without this quarantine. You know, I was going into people's offices doing tastings. We do free tastings across Chicago in people's offices, um, and there it's a great experience. People learn a lot. But yesterday, for example, I did a virtual happy hour and people had a lot of questions and everybody had their own bottle of whiskey and it was a really, really nice feeling. And something that um, I was speaking to my, my father, but my dad still lives in, in Scotland, but he was saying that that's, that's something very, very typical of a recession. It's very, very typical of, of these kind of moments that um, people, people, people have a drink, you know, they have a drink together. And my boss, he'll shoot me for saying this, but he has a great cliche. Um, my boss always says that water is what separates the world but whiskey is what brings it together. So that's a, that's a great, great way to kind of look at this, you know, look at this kind of thing. If you do have a bottle of whiskey in your house, maybe share one. And even if your pal who's, who's over the road from you can't come over and, and enjoy one, maybe he's got a bottle himself that, that he, could, uh, he could have together. So it's, there is solidarity in that. Absolutely. I want to say hi to Jessica, Christina, and Natalie, who are all watching right now. Thank you for watching this Facebook Live Broadcast. Jessica, Christina, and Natalie, great to have you in the party. Um, hopefully everybody's got, do you have a drink with you? Do you have a wee drink? I don't. I don't have a wee drink. I don't have a, a, a big drink, a wee drink, any drink. Do you, wanna, do you want me to give you a quick 10 seconds and I can talk about this and you can get yourself a drink? Keep doing your thing. Keep doing your okay. thing. Okay. So this is, this is, like I said, this is the Aberlour 16-year-old. Um, and I think one of the, one of the key things with, with Aberlour and with, and with a lot of Scotch whiskies in general is that we have to realize that they're not as smoky as people might have thought, you know. Um, people have this idea of scotch that it smells a little bit like a wet dog and it tastes like an ashtray, okay? That's not the kind of thing that we're kind of looking for. Um, with Aberlour, there's no smoky flavors whatsoever. And all of the barley that we use, all of the grain that we use to make Aberlour is sourced within 50 miles of the distillery. So this is stuff that, um, like I said before, the 16 is a whiskey that I can drink any time of the day, uh, Obviously not too early because, you know, you got, you got to look after yourself. But this is a, this is a perfect whiskey to get started on. Um, and if you are looking to get yourself into scotch, the 12, the Aberlour 12 and the 16 are both great whiskies to try. Um, the main reason for that is that we use a, a, a method called double cask maturation. Um, and double cask maturation essentially means that we use two different types of barrel. 
um, to mature the whiskey. So as I mentioned before, um, you know, the 12 year old would have been, would have been, uh, would have been produced in 2008 and we put it into barrels then. But what we did was when we, when we, when the whiskey comes out of the distillery, which is basically the factory that we make the whiskey in, when the whiskey comes out of the distillery, we put it into barrels. And with Aberlour, we put it into two different types of barrel. One barrel is called a, an Oloroso Sherry barrel. So it's very, very dark, um, dark fruit flavor that the barrel gives to the whiskey. And then the other barrel is a bourbon barrel, which comes, of course, from the, the land of the free and the home of the brave, United States of America. Um, put your hand on your chest if you're at home. Stand up if you have to. I've America. Got Scotland, I've got, yeah, Mar America. America. I've got, I've got a Scotland flag behind me because I thought I would represent, but for sure. sure. Um, so those two types of barrels, what they do is they give different flavor to the whiskey. And because the whiskey is sitting amongst that wood for such a long time and it's, it's resting in the wood for so long, the, the whiskey actually absorbs a lot of the flavor from the wood. So one is this bourbon barrel and it gives this kind of lovely vanilla honey sweetness. There's a little bit of citrus there, like apples and pears. And then we've got the sherry barrel, which is this obviously lovely, dark, fortified wine, which gives these dark fruit flavors like figs and dates and, and, uh, and raisins. I nearly said onions, not onions, ladies and gentlemen, not onions. That'd be weird. Uh, can, I we, ask, can I ask before you have a sip of that, uh, do you play? Yeah, I see the guitar in the background. Do you play music? I do play. I do play a bit of guitar. And actually, um, I probably should have put that down, but uh, I just bought that guitar today. It's a travel guitar. Um, and uh, I was very, very lucky because there's a, there's a local shop here in Chicago. It's just down the corner from me. I'm, I live in Ukrainian Village, and it's called uh, Tommy's Guitars and Trading Post. And these guys were, these guys were so, so nice to me. Um, they're totally shut, but I called them, and they're working on their website, and they offered them. Um, they offered to help me out with uh, with a guitar, so they did me a, a special delivery, which was very very nice of them, and I really appreciate it. But um, yeah, I probably should have put that down. I totally forgot. I've, I've just noticed now. I, I'm glad you left it up. Uh, this podcast is all about music, so that's oh, cool. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. yeah. So yeah, I mean, Tommy's Tommy's guitars. I mean, you should get in touch with these guys. They they were amazing with me today, and they gave me this this guitar a little bit of a discount because they were like, "You're local." Uh, they gave me a, a capo. They gave me, yeah, they really, really helped me out. So it was a pretty cool experience. And I've been playing all day. My fingers are killing me. I get it. All right. Sorry to distract you from. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. So um, if, if you're sitting at home and you're watching and you've got yourself a wee glass of wine, or maybe you're really lucky and you've got yourself some scotch or maybe some whiskey in general. Um, a lot of people talk about how there's several, you know, there's different steps to drinking it, but I'm going to keep it very, very short. We often talk about the first step being the color. Like you'll see this like kind of lovely golden color there to it. It is lovely. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. It's a very, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, liquid gold as it's sometimes known as. Um, and uh, then after that, we, we nose it or, or the smell or the, the aroma, if you like, of the whiskey. And the 16, I've added a wee bit of water. So there's not too much. There's not this kind of hard, harsh alcohol note there. It's very, very, it's very, very sweet and, um, and easy to smell. It's actually a little bit perfumey. It's, it's got like a kind of lovely fruity smell to it. I don't. Hey, what does the what does that step do for you? Does it kind of open up your senses to taste it better? Uh, explain that step. To give you to give you an idea, I've been I've been working in whiskey now for I mean I've been around whiskey for years and years, but I've been working in this kind of capacity for four years, and I smell it because your 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 sense of smell is so much stronger than your sense of taste. It's so much stronger. Um. There's millions and millions and millions of different sensories that go on in your nose compared to, you know, a, a couple of hundred maybe on your tongue or maybe even less, right? right. Um, and your nose, what happens with your nose as well, and I don't know if you've ever had this, but your nose is very, a very evocative sense. So sometimes you smell something and it transports you immediately to a moment in time. Absolutely. And, and you, didn't, you didn't mean that. You know, I think um, for me, for example, when I smell this, I, I think of like Scotland and obviously I would, but I think of like rolling hills in the North of Scotland and the Aberlour distillery. And like, there's a waterfall in the back of the Aberlour distillery. It's called Lynn Falls. Um, and every time I go to the distillery, every time I drink a bunch of these with the master distiller, or every time I'm drinking a bunch of these with the people that work there, I wander up the path up the back of the distillery. And I'll usually stand and occasionally people get into the water, which is freezing. I don't recommend that. <laughs> But I'll usually stand. I'll usually stand there and just kind of take it all in. And that's one of the beauties of this thing is that, you know, Scotch has been around for hundreds of years. You know, the first time we see it was in the late 1400s um, and written down. And 
it's definitely something that I'm very, very proud of to represent, you know? So when I, when I smell Aberlour and when I smell this one, particularly, it smells, it's got like a, it's got like a lovely sweetness to it, like almost like a caramel sweetness. And those kind of raisins and dates come through as well, that dark fruit side of things. And there is a little bit of that vanilla honey sweetness too, that I mentioned. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I love this one so much. It's, it's got a lovely balance to it. So I'm just going to get stuck into the important part, which is obviously the drinking part. part. Absolutely. In Cheers. Scotland, we say slancha. So if you're listening back home and uh, if you're watching back home and you're drinking slancha, okay? slancha. It, means, it means health or cheers. And we're all envious as we're watching you drink that. Liquid gold. Um, there it is. It's lovely. It's, it's, it's got such a lovely rounded, balanced um, flavor to it. Like I said, there's no, there's no smokiness there. So it's very, very, very easy to drink. I was also hey, here's the thing, Callum. We're watching you do this. Uh, you must be very good at your job because the second I hang up on this call, I, I'm calling the, the neighborhood liquor store. I'm calling Benny's downstairs in my basement. I'm getting a, a bottle of 12 because I, I'm just watching you. And I, I'm all in. Like, sold. Let, let's drink. Let's have, let's have some scotch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's an easy thing to sell, right? It's been... I mean, this is, this is 16 years old, this stuff. So um, it has a lot of history to it, a lot of heritage. Um, I mean, what we can do as well, is, well I'll, maybe, I'll, maybe, I'll maybe put this, in fact, I'll maybe just finish this because it's very tasty. Seems only right. It's International Whiskey Day on Quarantine Con Carne. Woo, it's good. Um, do you watch, are you a big film guy? Uh, I am. In so fact, it kills me that I, I, I subscribe to the AMC A-list. I thought this was brilliant. You spend like 20 bucks a month. You see up to three movies a week. I love to see movies that no one in my family ever wants to see with me. So I just I go to the movies by myself all the time. I can't do that now. The point is, I love film. I mean, I'm, I, I, I adore film. Um, and one of my favorite films, I'm a big Tarantino fan, and one of my favorite, favorite, favorite films is a film called Inglorious Bastards. Sure. And I'm sure, sure everybody's seen it. In that film, um, Michael uh, Fassbender plays a British officer, a British spy, if you like, who's impersonating a German officer. Um, uh, but he was originally born in Pizpalu, right? And he says in that film, just before um, the proverbial shit hits the fan, if you like, he says in that film, uh, there's, a special, there's a special rung in hell for, those, for men who waste good scotch. So I'm glad that we got to finish that, you know? Um, so <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk a little bit now about this cocktail, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my microphone up here. Um, try my best. Hear, I can hear you. You sound good. You can hear me okay? I can hear you okay. Still hear me? The, the camera was bouncing a little bit, making your couch bounce a little bit in the frame, so I got a little uh, seasick there, but I'm okay now. I put on, I put on my oh, look. Oh, I, I think they're calling it the Quarantine 15, only because it well, rhymes and it sounds better. It'll be, it'll be the Quarantine 15 by next week, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, I, I tore so, through a sleeve of Oreos about two hours ago. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a whiskey sour. Okay, so to make a whiskey sour, it's by far away my favorite cocktail. Um, and it's the kind of cocktail that is great when you go into a bar and you kind of want to, you kind of want to see what the bar's all about, you know? Um, see, here's the thing. I always perceive the whiskey sour as kind of like a starter cocktail. Like if you, if you, when you start drinking, that's like the first drink you order. It seemed like the safest drink. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean maybe. I, I, the reason that I like it is that everybody has their kind of own version of a whiskey sour. Um, people add things and they take things away and a lot of people add a lot of bitters to it. Um, my bitters are just through there. We'll get them in a second, but... Um, a lot of people add different things to it, and that's the beauty of it, right? Um, for, for, for a whiskey, the, basic, the basics of a whiskey sour are very, very, very simple. What you need is some simple syrup. Okay, that might look like whiskey, but it's actually, uh, it's actually kind of like a sugar syrup. Just oh. sugar and water, right? Yeah, sugar and water. And um, I've used brown sugar there. And my, the way that I like to do it is I like to do two parts sugar to one part water. So it's quite, it's quite sweet. And it just mm -hmm. means that I don't have to use nearly as much um, in, the, in the mix. You're also going to need one of these. Which an is egg. What? An egg. Okay, it's, it's definitely an egg. What came first? The whiskey sour or the Wait, egg? Wait, really an egg? Yeah, yeah, it's really an egg, yeah. Okay. Um, and then you're also going to need, which is where? Oh, yeah, here it is. This is some, um, so I, I squeezed some fresh lemon juice here. Yum. Um, and this is essentially your sour that's going to give, obviously, uh, it's going to, you know, lend itself to the sour itself. That's, uh, that was 100% lemon juice. I'm, I'm really, really big on using fresh ingredients, but I know that a lot of people at home, for example, they might not have time to 
to squeeze 10 lemons on a Friday night, right? So even if you buy these little bottles that are freshly squeezed lemon juice, that'll do you absolutely fine. Sure. And then, oh, go on. No, I, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm nodding. And, and then, of course, the most important part is that you've got yourself a little bottle of scotch. Um, a lot of people like to use bourbon. I think it's too sweet. And I actually like my, I like, I like my whiskey sour to be on the sour side rather than on the sweet side. Um, and that's about it. You'll also need ice, of which of course in Chicago, um, 99 times, 90% of the year, it's not very hard to find. So as, sim as simple as this, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to crack this egg, okay, and just get the egg yolk, uh, sorry, not the yolk, the white rather, into the shaker, just like this. Now, the reason for that is that the egg white gives us this lovely kind of frothy texture. And if you've ever had a really good whiskey sour, ladies and gents, it will feel, it will feel kind of smooth. And um, it's like a very, very, very smooth and easy to drink cocktail. So just getting all that egg white out like that, it's very, very difficult without a bar, but we're going to make do. We're all making it up as we go. That's okay. As we're sheltering at home. So I'm going to put that just over here in my glass here so I can throw that away. You, know, you talked about doing uh, tastings for offices. I know an office that would love to have you come uh, do a tasting. I, I'm confident uh, the office well, I work for would. would they're, always, they're always welcome to reach out. You know, I uh -huh. mean, we, we absolutely love doing it at Aberlour. Um, give them my number, give them my, <laughs> give them my Zoom, give them my everything. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm putting one ounce of this fresh lemon juice. Okay, and the one ounce is going straight into the shaker with the egg white. Okay, now. Because I'm a bit of a, a, a whiskey sour fanatic, I'm also going to add another quarter ounce there, just because I really, really like my whiskey sour, um, sour, if you like. And I'm already getting that kind of that, that lovely fresh lemon smell. Very, very nice. Then, um, this, was the, this was the little mix that I was preparing when we, when we first got on the call. And um, this is, my, this is my, uh, my simple syrup, if you like. Um, out here, in, out here in Chicago, I've actually been meeting a lot of people that like to use agave, so like agave uh, syrup. I'm more of a traditional guy. I'm all about the, the, uh, the brown sugar and the water. Like I said, two parts sugar to one part water. One ounce of that into the shaker. Okay, I actually did a little bit less than an ounce because once again, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm big on it being sour rather than sweet. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the most important part, okay, we're going to add two ounces of our Aberlour 12, okay? Now, the, the thing that I'm holding in my right hand that for the measure, this is called a jigger. Now, a lot of people at home might not have one of these, but you can use anything that's going to give you measurements. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to give you a good measurement for that. One last thing, before I, before I shake this bad boy up, what you'll do is you'll notice that I put all my ingredients into the smaller shaker. If I put all my ingredients into the big shaker and fill it with ice, sometimes it overfills because when I put the wee one on, then you're going to get it. So now I don't want you to get too excited. Okay. But I'm going to take my jacket off. I'm right? very excited. I, oh my God. My jacket off. It is a Friday night. It is a Friday night. I'm even going to, I might even just give it one this, of those. Throw it over the, there like this that. Is the best, this is the best cam show I've ever seen. Well, listen. I've got, I've got wanna, some tokens for you, my friend. If you want to join my OnlyFans, it's three dollars. <laughs> so what we're gonna do? What we're gonna do? This is the this is the important part of the whiskey sour part. The whiskey making the whiskey sour. I'm gonna shake it without ice first. Okay. So I'm gonna pour that in there. All that mix in there. Just to make sure everything's well blended before you chill it. Well, the reason for it, the reason for that, um, and I'm gonna shake this for about eight seconds. Now the reason for that is that what we do is when we have the, the egg white there, we want it to throb, like to froth, you know, we want it to be, we want it to be foamy. It's sure. almost like, it gives it this kind of smooth texture, spongy feel to it. Um, so you'll actually, you, you'll, you won't be able to see it there, but you might see it in that pour there. Yep. It's got this lovely kind of frothy texture to it. It does. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill, I'm going to fill this with ice. Okay. We're getting close to the good part now where you get to drink it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, Callum. Fill this one with ice. Pour the ice into the shaker. And then, like I said last time, we're going to shake for about eight seconds. Now, I'm gonna, this time I'm just going to talk you through what I'm doing when I'm shaking. What I want to do is I want to hold, put my thumb on this small shaker here, four fingers on the side of the large, and then I'm putting my four fingers on the bottom here. 
And then what you want to do is you can really, I mean, you, I mean, at the end of the day, you just shake it, right? Like I said, for about eight seconds. This is hot. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do after that, a lot of people are going to use a strainer to strain the whiskey. If I can get it open, that would be a disaster if I can't get it open. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, there we go. So it might it might not be a whiskey sour, ladies and gentlemen. It might it might just be it might just be the 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 perfect the perfect beginning, and then a sad end. Okay, here we go. Feeling it. There it is. So now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Um, a lot of people like to drink theirs on the rocks, so you can have some uh, ice in your glass. I am uh, I'm the kind of guy that I like to have it without ice. Um, obviously. That would be, a lot of people think that the ice dilutes it and whatnot, but um, it honestly doesn't really because what happens is all the ice in the glass just keeps it cold. Right. Um, I'm the kind of guy though that I don't need, I don't need to, much time to finish my whiskey sour. So, so. That's beautiful. Maybe. That is beautiful. Got a lovely, lovely look to it. And that kind of foaminess on there. That kind of lovely kind of light foaminess on the top is what is actually given to us by the by the egg white. So there you go. Slancha. Yeah, slancha. So that's your that's your whiskey sour. Very nice glass as well, if I do say so myself. Um as soon as this quarantine's lifted, we're coming to your place. We'll, <laughs> or we'll meet you out. We'll we'll be ready to meet out. Oh no, I'm ready to party, man. I'm ready to party. Yeah. So yeah, I mean I think, obviously, thank you so, so much for having me on. Um, I'm not going to leave you just yet, but I'm going to have a big drink of this. because As I'm, you should. As you should. It would be a waste not to. Um, but for everybody that's at home, and for you yourself, my man, uh, for everyone that's at home, please you know, stay safe during quarantine. But just staying safe doesn't mean that you can't enjoy yourself an Aberlour, an Aberlour sour, or an Aber sour, if you like. Um, but yeah, slancha. Cheers to you all. Stay safe. Cheers. And yeah, we all need distraction. We all need... Part of self-care is doing things that make you happy. And a, a nice, well-prepared cocktail on a Friday night, there you go. His face so says good. it all. And it, the whiskey cuts through enough that it's not all, like, super lemony? Yeah, so I think for me, the biggest thing um, is that you're using a whiskey that has, has quite a nice flavor to it. Uh, I would say I added quite a lot of lemon there. I did a quarter, an ounce, well, probably an ounce and a quarter. Um, so, or one and a quarter ounce, as you guys would say in the US. Um, so there is a lot of like kind of that, 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 that kind of sour flavor. Yeah. I didn't add, I didn't add a lot of the, the simple syrup though. I'm the, like, I never really do. I don't, I don't like to have a lot of simple in my, in my drinks. And then on the, uh, when I'm, when I'm pouring my, uh, when I'm pouring my whiskey, you know, you really want to make sure you're getting two ounces there all the way to the top, sure. all the way to the rim. Um, I used to work with a guy. I'm going to have a seat now because obviously I think you should it's all done. You, you've earned the rest. Now we're, we're also using, we're, I'm also using one of these, which is my Aberlour coaster. Um, and if anybody would like one of these, uh, we actually give these away for free. So these, this is a free thing that you can do and you can just, uh, I'll give, I'll send you a link after this. Great, 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 um, great. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think that for me, obviously, you know, um, the, the most important thing is obviously the, the, the whiskey coming through. But like I said, I used to work with a guy who would do two ounces of whiskey and into the cocktail. And then he would say, and for your friends and family, he would always drop a little bit extra in there, <laughs> um, which is always nice. You know, and yeah, it seems thoughtful. Yeah. If you're at a, if you're at a good bar in Chicago and someone, and someone says for your friends and family, then it's definitely, uh, it's definitely something that you should consider and you should probably go back there. Um, when you get a second, Absolutely. I want to say hi to Robert and Jose who've joined the chat. Uh, Callum, for, we, we already talked about where you can get Aberlauer. Mm -hmm. uh, Aberlauer, the website is just aberlauer.com. Yeah. So I think we're at, so I think, if, yeah, I think it's aberlauer.com. But if you, if you're on Instagram, you can find us at aberlauer underscore us. Um, and any questions that you feel to them there, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be able to answer. And you can also find me personally, Aberlour Chicago, all one word. So um, I, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's Aberlour spelled like that. A-B-E-R-L-O-U-R. Mm -hmm. 
um, and then A B E R L O U R, and then Chicago, all all together. And you'll find me on Instagram. And you can drop me a message, and I'll respond. And it'll also mean that you know, if I'm ever out and about, and I post on my story or something, then you can always come and see me for a drink, and I'll buy you a dram. That's fantastic. Uh, I couldn't imagine a better guest for International Whiskey Day. 